Hey guys, this is Miss Blauvelt. Uh, what I wanted to do here for you guys with this video is talk about the periodic table families. Um, and as you can see on this picture, there are nine families that we'll be talking about. Uh, families are typically grouped together based on their properties. So whether it be chemical properties, physical properties, families of elements are grouped together because they act the same way or as you can see physical properties they might have the same density they might have the same boiling point some of the elements might be really reactive so they get grouped together in these things called families um, the first group of families um, are called alkali metals these come straight from your notes here alkali metals are almost all of group one to exclude hydrogen hydrogen is not part of the alkali metal family um, hydrogen is actually a family of its own a family of one so we'll talk about hydrogen here in just a minute all of the elements in group one have only one valence electron. These are the most reactive metal family um, on the entire table. They're not found pure in nature. And we know properties of metals already. We've learned classes of elements being metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, and alkali metals all being the class metal. They have the properties of being lustrous. Um, which is shiny, that they are malleable, they are ductile, they're good conductors of electricity. So that's why the alkali metals, all of these elements are grouped together in one family. They look the same, they react the same, um, and as you can see on the bottom, that last bullet, it says they're not safe for humans to touch. This year, hopefully um, we'll get the opportunity to take sodium outside, which is an alkali metal, and you'll be able to see that we can't touch that alkali metal with our hands. It's highly reactive. It would actually interact with the moisture um, from our hands, and you'll see something pretty exciting, so I don't want to ruin the surprise, but it is a very reactive metal. Hydrogen, like I said, is a family of its own. It's a really special element um, that is right above the alkali metal family, still in group one, um, but it has some properties that are similar to the alkali metals, being that it's really reactive. Hydrogen is a reactive um, non-metal, though, so even though it's on top of the family of the alkali metals, hydrogen is a non-metal. It's really the only non-metal hanging out on the left side of the table along with the other metals. Alkali earth metals are the next group over. Um, these ones are all of group two, no exceptions on here. Uh, two valence electrons in its outer shell, so every single element highlighted in green there in the alkali earth metals has two valence electrons. All of these elements are really, really reactive, but definitely not as reactive as that first family we talked about, um, the alkali metals. So the alkali earth metals are a little bit less reactive. Um, again, because they're metals, they're silvery in color, they're good conductors, um, but what's really cool about these alkali earth metals, uh, they're used in fireworks. So each one gives off a distinct color, depending on which one of those elements in the alkali earth metal family that you burn, they all have a different, really vibrant, pretty color that they give off when put over a flame, so that's why they would be used for fireworks. Okay, the next family here, um, these are transition metals. Trans transition metals take up the majority of the table. Uh, you're going to see these elements run from group 3 all the way over to group 12. Transition metals are the largest family. The most elements are in this family. Now, what we do have in the transition metal family, kind of um, a varied array of properties. Uh, they tend to be hard, strong, shiny metals, because remember transition metals are all in the class of metals. They all tend to be pretty reactive, but because we talked about this earlier, that the groups don't determine the number of valence electrons for each of these elements, but they have a varied number of valence electrons. So they have, because of that varied number of valence electrons, they have a varied level of reactivity. But in general, they tend to be a pretty reactive family. All right, moving on to this family. Um, I had also brought up in class that this grouping here that we call the BCNOs um, 
tend to be grouped in different ways depending on the resource that you look at. Um, but for our purposes in eighth grade physical science, we're going to group all of these elements together, highlighted in the pink, as the BCNOs. If you didn't notice on the periodic table, um, the very top row of the BCNOs, they start with boron, carbon, nitrogen, and then oxygen, and all the elements below. So that's how you can remember that this is the BCNO family, because the BCNO actually stands for something. It stands for boron, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Um, so this is group 13 through 16. And remember when we talked about groups, group 13 has three valence electrons. Group 14 here has four valence electrons. Group 15 has five valence electrons. And group 16 has six valence electrons. So we refer to this family as being the most diverse because there's another layer of kind of complexity here that in the BCNO family, remember the staircase runs right through the middle of it. We have metals in the BCNO family. So the left side of the staircase, you're gonna have metals. Down that staircase itself, we have those nine metalloids. And then to the right of the staircase, we also have nonmetals. So we're going to get a variety of different classes all within that one family. All right. Um, the next family over is going to be our halogen family. This is all of group 17. And all of group 17 has similar properties because it has seven valence electrons. Uh, these halogen elements tend to be pretty poisonous. They're not very good conductors, remember, because they are nonmetals. Um, the majority of these halogens are also in the gaseous state, so if you want to remember that, uh, that would be a property of halogens, uh, halogen elements as well. Moving on to our noble gases. This is uh, all of group 18, starting with helium on the top there. All of these elements have eight valence electrons except helium. Remember, helium only has two electrons to work with, so it can't possibly have eight valence electrons if it only has two electrons to begin with. Um, so that's the only exception there in the noble gases, that helium's going to have two valence electrons, while all the other elements below it, they're going to have eight valence electrons. Uh, all the noble gases tend to be colorless, tasteless, odorless, and completely unreactive. They don't interact with any other element. They have a full valence shell, so they're not going to be bonding with anything. They're totally happy all by themselves. Um, one really good vocab word that you want to keep in mind, you may see the word inert every now and then. Inert is just another word for unreactive. So saying noble gases are inert, really nice fancy science way of saying that noble gases are unreactive. Okay, we have two more families to look at here. Um, now, these are two separate families, all of period six. These are called the lanthanide family. So the lanthanide family, their properties um, that they share are that they're all shiny, soft, and reactive. But even more special for this family is that they are they spark when you um, hit them together, kind of like flint, if you've ever heard of flint. Um, they spark, all of these elements are going to spark when you strike them together. Actinides, period seven, again highlighted in orange here. The actinide family, super unstable, radioactive, and synthetic, meaning all of them have to be made in a laboratory. Um, kind of a little fun fact uh, for your element project, it would probably help out there, that elements 92 and below are all naturally occurring, and anything above 92, the atomic number of 92, these are going to be all the elements that are synthetic or made in a laboratory. Um, so the entire actinide series here, these are synthetic, they are made in a laboratory. And when I say radioactive, you want to be really careful that radioactive is something different than reactive. Reactive, we think more of um, being able to bond, being explosive, being volatile, while radioactive just means that um, it's pretty unstable and that nucleus falls apart pretty rapidly um, and in a lot of cases can give off energy in waves that are harmful to people. Uh, so that wraps up all of our nine families. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, continue studying and make sure you let your teachers know if you have any other questions on families. Bye!